Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Experience Kills. I'm your host Ben and with me today is the guy who keeps showing up, Rob. Welcome back. You can't get rid of me. I'm like that lucky penny you found. I'm stuck with you. Well, we're lucky to have found you, frankly, and we love having you on Experience Kills. So this is it's positive. Isn't that a positive start to the episode, everyone? Isn't that lovely? Scarily positive from you, Ben. Scarily positive. And, and you know what else is positive? The fact that Rebel Galaxy Outlaw has finally made it to consoles man did this take a long time right so the reason i've been like counting down the days and weeks for this to show up on consoles and badgering the developers and public and, and, and their pr guys to try and get hold of some code to look at this because i absolutely loved the original rebel galaxy uh, it was a real surprise hit that it came out like a good few years ago now on consoles after a release on pc and i might add it came to consoles a lot quicker than this one did uh, i think that's got a lot to, to do with the fact that uh, they used a third party port house to bring the first one over where they've done this themselves in-house so it took a lot more time and I think the, the port is a really good one of the PC game and you know like I said this is a sequel to Rebel Galaxy so the original Rebel Galaxy was a space combat trading space trucker game kind of thing where you played as a ship for the most part you know you were kind of like a, a non-named i think you might have been a named protagonist but you were never shown on screen now what we've got with outlaw the first thing here is that they've gone for a protagonist route here um they have a character juno and she was from the original game and it, this is a prequel so this is like her early uh, adventures in this particular sci-fi setting uh, so therefore obviously there's a lot more in the way of cutscenes and story beats and that's and that's cool but there have been some big changes to rebel galaxy that i'm maybe not as much of a fan of um, and that the main thing in is that made that first game stand out so much in that kind of quite quite sort of almost crowded space now huh, space <laughs> see what i did um is that you know what you get with a lot of these games it's a lot of fighter combat it's a lot of small ship combat you know especially what you see in elite and what you've seen in other games throughout the years like privateer uh, and free space and uh, lots of other games like that. and i've played a lot of them on pc and been a big fan but rebel galaxy stood out because it was a capital ship so you had a big ship which you'd have lots of options to upgrade and buy new ones as well but you'd have hard points and it was much more focused on like freighter and capital ship up sized combat so you'd have just there would be fighters and like swarm attacks but you'd deal with them like, with like point defense weapons and they were basically just a nuisance but everything was really about capital ships you know firing giant iron cannon bursts and flat cannon you know fusillades and like just heavy weapon engagements and because of that the game felt really different the ships moved quite slowly they were quite cumbersome uh, they had large turning circles and things like that and it gave it a different feel uh, at the same time it was very accessible and it worked really well on console uh, so the change here in outlaw is that we're back in a fighter size ship you know there is there is still cargo but everything's much more nimble you're in the cockpit you know you're firing you know much more directed weaponry attacks just out of the front of the ship there's not really any of the arc management you had with the capital ships and everything's a lot quicker and faster and you know your full 3d um space that was the other thing that made the original rebel galaxy very uh, accessible that it was all kind of on a 2d plane so while you had the idea of a 3D environment, everything was really realistically, almost like on a tabletop, Rob, which I know you'd appreciate because of your board gaming. Um, I and do. It, and, and it stood out and it was unique. Whereas this now feels a lot more like the other games in this genre, like Elite, like Privateer, like Free Space. Um, and it's not a bad thing. It's just a bit of a shame in a way because they do it well. It's mapped really well to the controller and they actually make that as the primary development platform was for a controller much like a an xbox controller which made the fact that it took so long come to console even more frustrating because i think it was designed for that from the the bottom up and it's mapped well and it plays well and it and the ship handles well and it feels nimble um and you can get around and you can do your missions very easily but it's just i i'm personally a bit disappointed in this change now i knew about this change don't get me wrong this wasn't a surprise um so coming into this game i was aware of the change that they've made here but yeah it's still a bummer i st i loved the capital ship combat it was the thing that made it so exciting i you know big hulking behemoths with 20 hard points of iron cannons just sending this barrage of you know broadside attacks down other big ships you know that was really different um and this just feels a bit more like i've played it before and that's that's a shame but 
let's talk about uh, briefly I'll talk about a bit more around how the game works the tenants of the game and then I'll open it up to you Rob to see if you've got any questions for me or thoughts on it uh, so basically this is space trucking right so you know you're doing lots of trading you're buying commodities you're selling them at other places uh, there's a story in here as well and there are missions and there's a structure and it's about trying to deal with uh, a, a bad guy who you know you want to get revenge in. and the game starts with a really beautifully done 2d animated cutscene which is really nice we don't see a lot of that throughout the rest of the game uh, there's 3d models in this game though they're not maybe the best this is a small team at double damage after all uh, they've done a pretty good job considering the limitations on resources uh, like I mentioned the combat is now fully 3d um, so you you're still managing your ship you're still buying new ships you're still buying new weapons and upgrades and and you know shields and hull improvements for your ship but it's not um, as big a scale as it was before obviously in the previous uh, rebel galaxy um, I'm having a good time there's a lot here there's like about 25 maybe maybe more than that maybe like 40 different star systems to explore so it's all about going out there fighting pirates you can either be a good guy and work for the authority or you can be a bad guy and like just go around attacking freighters and police and you know getting wanted and chased through the systems and that's all very much like the predecessor game uh, and i think the universe that they've built is this is quite fun you've got some distinct alien races you've got a distinct tone you've got this music that's very evocative and much like in the original game has actually been massively expanded in this with this radio stations that you can listen to but it gives you that space truck and you know you're going along listening to the tunes which is all this kind of quite southern inspired rock much like all the space system is actually kind of southern and american inspired with names like texas and nevada and stuff like that it's very got a, a, got a unique tone that i find really appealing and it pulls you in um but yeah it's good fun it's really good fun rob so have you got any thoughts questions anything that you'd like me to dig a bit deeper into I mean, I have been looking for a good like space sim game on uh, console for a long time. I tried Elite Dangerous; it would not function for me. No matter what I tried, it just would not work. So that ruled that out for me. I dabbled a little bit in No Man's Sky, the Minecraft in space, basically, but I just never really devoted enough time to it because I don't have a ship combat in that. From what I've seen, the combat in this looks significantly more visceral, more light effect, more explosive. It, would you say that's right? How do the graphics measure up against other offerings? Yeah, I think I think you kind of come across a really good point there, which was that this is a way more accessible experience than something like Elite Dangerous. Um, while Elite Dangerous has its massive fans and uh, defenders and stuff like that, it's really sim heavy. Whereas this, is especially, you've got more difficulty options, but if you play it on the normal settings, you could, you've basically got a very accessible game. For example, there's a lock on. So when you fight an enemy, um, you know how these 3D environment uh, space sims can get. You can be just like flying around, mm -hmm. just doing loops, hoping to see them again. In this, you have a lock on, so it will match velocity and it will track the enemy. And then while it's doing that, you can kind of like sort of fine tune your aiming to get your shots on target more effectively, which is okay. really, really nice. Uh, then you've got like various missile weapons as well, that lock on effects that they have, and you can jam the incoming missiles and everything is quite accessible. There's still a fair amount to take in. You've got energy management, you can divert energy to shields and weapons and engines, depending on the situation. So there's, there's still a lot going on. But it's definitely on board you in a way that's way more user friendly, way more kind of accessible. And it's not trying to be a hardcore sim. Other things that really indicate that to me are there are these beautiful, well done 3D models of your docking animations, of your leaving the space bases and stuff like that. But you can basically hit that A button and skip everything. So you can just, mm. you know, you're docking, skip, skip, and then you've landed and you can go do your co commodity markets and get your mission board stuff and go to the bar and shoot some pool and then, you know, skip, skip, skip through the, you know, you can really just skip through dialogue, through loads, the, you know, these beautiful animations, you know, you might occasionally come up, come up against a load screen, but everything was very rapid for me on my um, Xbox One X. Nothing really ever took a long time to load in this, which again, accessible, accessible, gets you into the game, gets you into those dogfights. Yeah. The other thing that is yeah, it's really nice is that you've got a system menu and you can set waypoints and you can select your missions and then instead of having to like fly to them in real time you can just point at one and go engage autopilot and again an animation kicks in and then you appear at the destination and uh, or you can skip the animation so you basically just 
boop, 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 flip around through the system. You know, you don't have to spend hours flying between waypoints uh, and you can just get into those areas of combat. You know, there are these distress signals and there are things that can pull you out of autopilot like enemy engagements and stuff like that. But you can actually ignore the distress, sig distress signals so they don't pull you out and you can just yeah get around very quickly, which is very user friendly when, for example, you've gone, oh, I'm going to pick up these things from here, but buy those and I want to sell them there. So I need to know I need to get there as quickly as possible and you can do that very rapidly even between multiple systems because you're hitting the autopilot you're skipping the animations you're just going and doing what you want to do which makes that kind of um, curve of making money really yeah. kind of easy for example I wanted to make 50,000 to do a thing 50,000 credits and I want to say what it was because it was a pretty cool thing that I discovered uh, to do with a space base and I was like okay I want to do this and I was able to generate that 50,000 in like 30 minutes less than that probably actually it didn't take me much time at all to get a big sum of credits together in the early game to get this thing I wanted so it's very uh, easy in that regard it really doesn't hold you up from getting to the fun stuff the stuff that you want to be doing it knows why you're playing a game like this you know it's it's not necessary for the simulation experience it's for that kind of you know memory of that experience mm. you know that that idea of it how much fun it would be to be a space trucker but in actuality the realistic sort of representation of that is pretty tedious so it's not going to force you to do that unless you actually want to and don't get me wrong you could do that you could play it totally sim and you could fly all of these things in real time and not skip a single thing but i don't know who's going to do that i know i certainly am not going to do that. i don't have the time for that which is cool I know some people would definitely do that as an option. Uh, I, I definitely see the attraction in that. What about like differences in ships and weapons? Are there loads of different models? Is it customizable? How is it a choice between five main ones? Like, is there a lot of depth in that? Same with the weapons. Is there a good like combat complexity? Are lasers good against shields and that sort of thing? But what's yeah. that depth like? Sure. I mean, um, while while this game is accessible, it's also at times really freaking hard. Right, so you get into a combat situation you're not you're not prepared for. You're dead, and you, you're just dead. Like you're gonna get blown up really quick, um, and it doesn't stop you going into those encounters. Right, so the missions you get are color coded in difficulty, so you do know if you're taking on something more challenging, um, which is really helpful. Um, but basically, yeah, there's loads of customization. There's dozens of different types of ships, uh, and probably like you know more than dozens of different types of uh, weapon hard point options and stuff like that you've got everything from like you said lasers to like auto cannons to plasma weaponry to iron weaponry so there's absolutely tons of options in that regard and you can pick all of that and as you get different ships you get different types of and amounts of, of hard points mm -hmm. so you can choose the different types of loadout that suit your uh, style and and you know your type of desire for how you want to play the game now personally i like to be quite uh, aggressive but i also like a decent cargo size so I'm mixing up different types of hard points, different types of missiles. Uh, and, you know, there is there is complexity here because a lot of them will take up different amounts of your uh, reactor core, your energy reserves. So you're balancing, you have a boost function in this game as well. So you're in combat, you might be juggling things like your shields, your engine, your weapons, because you're trying to boost. You're also trying to land heavy shots. You're trying to close the range so you can do something with a, a launcher weapon. So there's loads going on here. Um, but what, what is nice about it is you can really approach it at your own pace. You can stay in that first system. You can really get to know uh, what the systems are and stuff, and you know, work out what type of gameplay you want to do. And you, if you want, you can stay in there and just grind, grind, grind a really decent ship before ever leaving it if you really wanted to. But you also kind of you got to you're going to be limited by the amount of money you can make. Um, you know, because you're only going to be making you know a few thousand. Because when you want those, the ships are bloody expensive. So they're hundreds of thousands of credits, right? Mm. So to make the money to buy the ships, you're going to have to start to do the more difficult missions and get out there into the galaxy a bit more and, you know, really take on more stuff. Like, cause, like I said, there is a story mission. There is a primary mission chain, if you like, but you can completely ignore it. You can stick it to the one side and just go and do side stuff and commodity trading yeah. and, you know, bounties and all kinds of stuff like that. So there's absolutely tons to do. The other thing you were talking about there is that barrier to entry is really low on this game. It's like 24 99 25 pounds on Xbox One, which is really reasonably priced for what is a massive experience. And, and it looks great and it sounds great with the music especially and all hmm. the sound effects sound brilliant brilliant and when you consider that such a small team have made this i think it's a real accomplishment but i also you know can't fault the execution of such a large scope experience they've done an incredible job at double damage <laughs> 
that I think I'm probably going to get hold of this. I've been looking for something this good for a while, so I'm I'm hyped for it. Yeah, man, I, th I think it's really good. It's it's kind of a shame that it's not multiplayer. I'd love to be able to, even if it was just small scale multiplayer, you know, doing mm. this with a friend, trading and going around taking on missions would be really good. But obviously that's a, a, a huge, difficult thing to implement for a small team. So I can't, I can't fault them for focusing down into the single player. And like I said, in that regard, they've really beefed out the storytelling, the cutscenes, the narrative. Mm. There really wasn't any of that in the first game. It was very slight to the point that I can't really remember anything specific about it but they, yeah. they've really committed to it with this with the, what would have been the standout character from that previous game and they've really expanded on her uh, story and her kind of origin and everything which is really compelling and she's brilliantly grizzled and she's already older at this point she's not like some kind of young mm. you know child or teen character she's an older woman who was actually already out of the game and she's pulled back in and she's so miserable it's fun and she's a really cool character <laughs> and i really enjoy that about her um she's really really good but and her interactions with all the different alien races and stuff is, is fascinating but um yeah I, I i i'm enjoying this game i'm enjoying this game and if i think if i came to this having never played the original i i would have really really dug it like it's like an accessible elite which is exactly what i want because i mm. want to love and get into elite and give that time but there's no way i can commit that to it like, there's just no way. I've, I own that game and all the expansions on a couple of different platforms, and yet I've never spent more than an hour with it. Whereas this, yeah. I've already spent way more time than that, and it's way more accessible. And the, and the curve, while there's challenge to it, and, the, and the, there are difficult times, it's also you, you never feel like it's impossible. When you get defeated, you're like, right, well, I need to just level up more, buy some more gear, get a better ship, and then I can go back and do that. So it feels like you understand what you have to do to progress at all times. I really like it. Yeah, no. Uh, that sounds amazing. Rebel Galaxy Outlaw it's a strong recommendation from me and it, like I said it runs really nice on the console and they've done a really good job with this port uh, and you lucky guys on PC have had it for over a year and I'm just really glad to finally be playing it so I hope you've enjoyed uh, watching this video uh, I would love you to check out the audio podcast if you don't have time to sit down and watch please consider our podcast which are the whole content you've just seen in this uh, except for the visuals obviously that's how a podcast works but you can take them on the go with you you can take them to work you can take them to your, on your commute down the gym shopping with your mask on you know you're not meant to be interacting with anybody anyway so put your headphones on and listen to us instead surely that's a, a good thing Rob don't you think that's a good idea that is mostly how I live my life when I go to uh, Tesco's. I, I do just put headphones on and I've got something going on Audible or Podcast Addict, something like that, uh, just playing away. Well, we're available, or very shortly will be available from Amazon Podcasts. We're going to be on Google's Plays Podcast. We're on iTunes. We're on Spotify. We're on Acast. We're on anywhere, basically, you can get a podcast now. So think about that as an audio option. Um, so we've massively upgraded everything we're offering you in that regard. But while you're on YouTube, give us a like. Give us a subscribe. We're approaching a big milestone. We'd love that support. Uh, and that would be all we ask for, I promise you. Uh, you can find us on Twitter, at Experience Kills, for the latest and breaking you know, game news. You can find me at DIYE for retweets of the Experience Kills Twitter account, mostly, more than anything else. You can find Rob. Where can they find you, Rob? Rob is on Twitter now. Yes. You can find me at Homeless Mr. Gibbs. It will be either plugging Experience Kills, talking about gaming, or plugging my Magic the Gathering channel as well. So until next time, uh, we've been Experience Kills. Ciao for now.